a masculine man desires a feminine woman. And the reality is that a lot of you ladies desire a masculine man. Now, some of you might be feeling like, well, there ain't that many going around anymore. <laughs> That's a whole other discussion. But the fact remains that you, as a woman, many of you are typically drawn to more masculine men. But part of the struggle in attracting that masculine man is answering the question, are you exuding your feminine energy? Are you leading with the energy that's going to draw to you the things that you desire and want in your life? And not just in the sense of that masculine man, but the overall quality of your life. Because femininity, again, is your power. It is your superpower. It is that thing that once you unlock it, you are going to see things get so much better. So I'm going to break down for you some of the, the feminine qualities and traits that men love in women. But again, understand that it's not just for them, it's for you. Now, but before I begin, be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel so you can watch all my other videos. But number one on this list is being open and receptive. So what do I mean by that? When you are a woman walking in your feminine energy, you are open, open to love. You are able to receive compliments. You are able to allow a man to do for you. And that's a huge, important point because so many women, so many of you struggle right now with letting a man do for you. And you don't understand how that doesn't exude femininity, all right? Being too caught up in your independence, being too walled up, because the reality is that letting him do for you requires you to be vulnerable. And many of you fear that vulnerability. You not only fear that vulnerability, hell, you may even fear femininity as a whole because to you, femininity may equate to weakness. Femininity equates to that's what got me hurt in the past. And so now you think by having that wall up, by I'll take care of it myself, by not having to rely on no man, I emotionally protect myself from being hurt and let down. But in actuality, you cause more damage. You add more stress to your life and you don't allow your feminine energy to come out of you, which it not only repels the kind of man that you want, that masculine man, it draws in the man who will put the burden on your back, who will leech off of you, who don't, doesn't mind you being the one carrying all the stress and being overwhelmed because those men don't walk in their masculine energy. Now, I, I don't want to get too far off the point here. Let's get back to being open and receptive. That is a quality that the masculine man loves to see in a woman because you have to also understand that giving to you, providing for you, is something that a masculine man wants to do. And when you're not able to receive that, you essentially kill his ability to pour love, to pour desire, uh, to feel good about what he also brings to the table into your life. Because whether we want to accept it or not, everyone wants to feel needed and valued in a relationship. They want to feel needed and valued by that person they take interest in. And by not allowing him to pour into you in his way because you are not receptive, you kill that. You choke the life out of that. And again, you set yourself on the path to receive the type of men who will drain you rather than the men who will fill your cup and uplift you and take those burdens off your back. So embrace being more receptive. And it's not just being receptive to again, him doing for you. It's being receptive to a man giving you a compliment. It's being receptive to love in general, being open to it. Many of you say you want love, but you're scared as hell of it. You are running from the hill for the hills when you see true love come your way, because again, that love requires vulnerability. And so let me add this. If you are struggling in this area, it starts with you healing. I mean, hell, to unlock your feminine energy as a whole, you've got to embrace healing. It is what is truly necessary in this process. And again, I want you to understand healing, 
unlocking your femininity, it's not just about the men. I feel like I have to like stress that point so you understand this is for you first and foremost. But it will not just benefit you. Yes, it will benefit your ability to have this amazing relationship. It will benefit uh, if you have kids already. It will benefit how you engage with others around you. So be willing to embrace healing so that you can become more receptive so that you can start exuding more of your feminine energy. The second feminine quality that men love in women is being positive and encouraging. All right? No... I would argue most men do not want to deal with a negative woman. And negativity does not convey femininity, all right? And so you've got to get to a better place. Now, what contributes to that? One little thing that helps is smiling more. Now, I know some of y'all are probably already making a face because I'm telling you to smile more, right? And, and, and some of you don't like to be told that you need to smile more. But please understand that smiling is good for your soul, number one. But yes, it helps convey more positive energy and femininity. There was a study that was done that shows men find women more attractive when they smile. That's just the reality. And now some of you may be saying, well, men need to smile too. I'm not saying men shouldn't smile too, but the same study found that men who weren't smiling or smiling in their pictures actually were getting, being found more attractive. And the reason is because the non-smile conveyed more of this masculine energy. And the smile taps more into your feminine energy. Now, please understand, we all have masculine and feminine energy in us. We all will have to tap into both sides at different times. But there is a dominant energy that each side has to walk in if they want to get certain results and what I would argue are the best results in their life, all right? So yes, tapping into that positivity, and, and let me also say in regards to the smiling, smiling becomes easy when you're at peace from within. And so that goes back to the healing again. And you're going to notice everything I mentioned on this list, at the root of it is you needing to heal if you're struggling in this area. But understand that, yes, smiling, being more positive with your words, with your attitude, with your overall energy is, is a feminine quality that men truly love in a woman and men are more drawn to in a woman. So now let's move on to number three. And I think you're going to find number three a little interesting. Third one is knowing how to persuade, not dictate. All right. So here's the thing. Feminine energy at its core can be very seductive, very sly, very just very delicate with the approach because the feminine energy, again, knows how to persuade, knows how to get what they want out of people using more positive, softer energy. The, the person who dictates is, well, you need to do this, and you need to do that, and they're telling you what to do. It's a harder energy that repels men, or more specifically, repels masculine men, repels men who want a healthy, loving relationship with a woman. That's not what a man is drawn to. The same way, listen, you don't want someone who's dictating to you, all right? You want someone that, yes, can lead. You want someone who's strong, can make decisions, but not just telling you what to do and the story, right? So why the hell would he want that? That's not what he wants. But as a woman, when you know how to use your feminine energy, you technically can still get what you want <laughs> without having to be a dictator. Now listen, here's a, a simple example. Have you ever noticed a woman who uses terms of endearment with everyone? Everyone is baby, sweetheart, honey, all right, when she talks to people. If you paid attention and watched her, do you ever see that woman having a hard time to get her, a man to do her a favor? No. She'll have a man washing her car, carrying her groceries, opening her door. Why? Because she knows how to talk to the men. She knows how to convey that persuasive, feminine, even seductive energy. And it, and it doesn't have to be seductive in this sexual way, but seductive in a way that, again, it just, it reels the men in. It kind of puts men in a trance. And it's like, okay, like, they'll do what you say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when you learn how to master that, 
men, whether knowingly or unknowingly, love that. Love that you know how to talk to me in a way that, yes, can still get me to see your side or still get me to embrace what you desire here without just trying to run me and tell me what to do. And I'm going to give you one quick example um, using myself, all right? I remember this was a long time ago. I had a friend, a woman friend, genuine friend, all right, platonic friend. And, you know, she would call me, and the first thing she would do when she calls me is she'll say, what are you doing? And my response would be, none of your damn business, all right? <laughs> Every single time. Now, here's the thing. I did not have a problem telling a woman what I was doing, friend or no friend. My issue was how she was talking to me. You're talking to me like I'm your child. You're questioning me like I have to answer you right now. Whereas another woman can call me and say, hey, what are you up to? And I'll give them the whole damn rundown of what I'm doing, what I did earlier, what I plan on doing later. When you know how to talk to a man, it's easier for him to open up. It, he's more willing to open up. But when you come across with that attacking energy, you will shut things down. You will cause things to be thrown left. So be mindful of that. Learn how to persuade rather than dictate. That's going to go a long way with exuding a, a feminine quality that men are definitely drawn to. So now we're on number four. And number four is practicing self-care and keeping yourself up, all right? M masculine men or men in general, typically, um, they love a woman who takes care of herself. They are drawn to a woman who is, and again, not just taking care of yourself. Yes, there is a part of it that is taking care of how you look and, and keeping up your look and your presentation. That's just real. That just is what it is. And again, the more masculine a man is, the more that he, he, he may desire that in his woman because that, that does pour into feminine energy, all right? But it goes beyond just how you are presenting yourself physically. It's, it is about self-care on all levels because what you have to understand is this. If you don't take care of yourself overall, mentally, emotionally, all these things, spiritually, then you will start to deteriorate in a way that you can't show up in those other feminine ways that we've already talked about and will continue to discuss. You won't have the energy for that positivity. You won't be able to be as patient and persuading. You, you, you won't uh, have the energy to even care about how you look today because you're so beat down and worn out. So when you don't take care of you, you no longer become good for him, for yourself. You, you just completely throw things off track. So when I say self-care, I mean it as I say it. Self-care overall. You need a day where you have a break. You need a day to recharge your batteries. And I would argue that any man who is serious about you, cares about you, um, and, and, and is a man who truly walks in his masculine is not going to have a problem. It's going to embrace you doing what you need to make sure you can always bring your best to the table. And so you've got to take an inventory or you've got to create a structure in your life that allows you to have me time, that allows you to pour into yourself. Many of you are so burnt out and burdened by all the things going on in your life. And essentially life is running you. You're not running your life. And you don't realize how that is stopping you from walking in your feminine energy. And again, exuding that feminine energy. So... You know, if anyone's saying, well, I just don't have time. Listen, you do. You have to make time. You, you've got to be strategic. You've got to sit down and map out, okay, what are my hours? What am I doing every day? How can I rearrange my time? I'm going to give you one quick story. I had a client. This was years ago. And she came to me, and she was struggling with dating and relationships. I, I think she had been divorced for a few years. Anyways, she also had two kids. And so... I noticed this woman was overwhelmed, stressed, and definitely not walking in her feminine energy. So I was like, okay, what, give me your schedule. What, what's your schedule looking like? And she was running down where she works nine to five during the week. When she comes home, she's cooking for the kids. She's taking care of them. You know, she's a single mother, all these things. I said, okay, well, what about the weekends? Well, on the weekends, it's time to clean the house. She has to clean the kids' room. I said, wait a minute, stop right there. How old are the kids? 
She was like 14 and 15. I said, wait, wait a minute. So you got what I call grown ass kids, <laughs> all right? 14, 15, able-bodied children, okay? And you're cleaning their room? This is your weekend that you should be relaxing and you have to clean your kid's room? Oh, hell no. This is a problem. So when you say to me, you don't have time, no, you have not created a structure that gives you the time. So I gave her the homework assignment of, no, for the next two weeks, I need you to train those kids how to clean their room and leave it on them. And to be honest with you, you may want, and I know some of you may be saying, well, they don't clean it right or they don't do it, so I got to pick up after them. Listen, it's not that I want you to accept your child's dirty room, right? But <laughs> if, if, if let's just say you're able to get things to a place where the children are respecting the common areas, but their room isn't always the cleanest on the weekends. If you having to, if you have to take yourself out of your time to relax and recharge so that you can clean up after them, like that's not worth it to, to ensure their room stays clean. I, I just don't think that's worth your peace and sanity. And you got to be honest with yourself, are you cleaning their room because it's really that important or is that a distraction for you? Are you just finding ways to stay busy because you don't want to face the reality of your life? And I know that's hitting some of y'all's spirit because that's what some of y'all are doing. And, and you're using all this, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do that. No, you are trying to distract yourself by overfilling your plate with with all these chores and extra activities that don't need to be there. Stop. Stop doing that. And this goes back to you need to heal so that you stop trying to distract yourself, that you address whatever deeper issues are going on there, and that you can start creating a life that allows you to have more time for yourself and a priority on self-care, which, yes, will allow you to walk more in your feminine energy and exude it and create an overall better quality of life. All right. Whew. So I, a lot just came out there, all right? But let's keep going. Let's get to number five. But before I mention number five, listen, if you notice, I keep talking about healing. We're clearly talking about feminine energy and feminine qualities. But I also want you to find more peace, find your purpose. I want you to be able to experience all the things that you desire in life. So a lot of you ask me about one-on-one -on -one coaching. Well, what I do have for you is my special coaching program. Go to www.receivingmyblessings.com or click the links in the description or the comment section. It has helped thousands of women. You are going to love it. It's going to be exactly what you need because, again, we've got to prioritize our growth, our self-care, our healing, and, and invest in that. And this is going to allow you to go on a journey with other like-minded women who are all encouraging each other and getting to a better place. So again, click that link in the description or in the comment section or go to receivingmyblessings.com. So now number five is being attentive and considerate. All right. Being attentive, being considerate, being nurturing are all very feminine qualities. And men love that. Now, I feel the need to say this, though this may sound weird, <laughs> but I'm going to say it. You can see how much men love this by seeing how some men are with their mothers. All right? Now, listen, I'm the first one to say I, I, I don't want men to be mama's boys in the sense that they don't know how to detach from their mother and prioritize their wife or their, their partner, right? But I do think there is plenty to learn from that dynamic. And when these men are so attached or loyal to their mothers, it's because that mother pours into them in those ways. She's attentive. She's considerate. She's very encouraging, very supporting. All of those things are feminine qualities that men desire and want in a woman. And, and sometimes what happens is that because he does not get those qualities from his partner, and we can discuss all the reasons why he's with a woman who doesn't give him that, but the point is, when he does not get that from his partner, but his mother gives him that, 
you will see him be more attached to his mother than his partner. You will see him prioritize his mother and allow her in some cases to even dictate the relationship more than considering how his partner feels. Because in some ways, the one who gives those qualities holds the power. I kind of hate to phrase it that way, but it's a reality. It, it does play out that way in so many scenarios. So I'm not telling you this to simply make you think, oh, well, now I have the, all the power, but it is to help you understand that, yes, it will strengthen your relationship. It will draw more masculine men to you. It will, again, also allow you to walk more in your femininity. And you have to understand that the more you're able to tap into these feminine qualities in other ways, the more it feeds your other feminine qualities. So it kind of helps build you up overall. And, and again, brings you to a better place. And, and real quick, I have a story I have to mention that conveys this a little bit more too. So I remember one time I had this client. Uh, she was in London. She might be watching this one day. I don't know. But anyways, uh, she's going to laugh when she hears the story. So she's in London and beautiful woman, uh, uh, actually was a m model. Anyways, she told me one time how, you know, she, she wasn't getting approached by guys. Guys weren't approaching her. Guys were not asking her on a date. And we would do sessions by Skype. And I was like, hey, listen, I think it's because you look hard. You're, you, you don't look approachable. You know what I'm saying? And, and when, you, when you're exuding a hard energy and you're good looking, that actually can make you even more intimidating uh, for a man to want to approach you. So I was like, I, need, I think you need to, you know, exude more feminine energy. And she was like, well, what you want me to do? You want me to walk around with a flower in my head? And I said, yes. I said, for one week, I want you to put a flower in your hair. I, I seriously said this. Put a flower in your head. I want you to wear nothing but pastel colors, bright colors, feminine clothes, dresses, skirts, all that. Let's do that for one week and let's see what happens. I swear to y'all, on day two of the experiment, she was axed out on a date. But that's not even the, the really good part about the story. The good part was when we talked about it, she said, you know what? What she loved most is that she felt like a woman. For the first time in a long time, she felt like a woman and it felt good. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm very, or that's one of the reasons why I'm very passionate about helping you in this journey of tapping more into your feminine energy. Because again, though I'm presenting it as qualities men love, it's, it's so much more about you and what's going to make you happier and give you more peace. So anyways, getting back to the original point, being able to be more attentive, being more nurturing, caring, all those things definitely exude feminine energy and make you a much more desirable woman, woman to a lot of men. All right, so now number six is being lighthearted and having a sense of humor, all right? Again, femininity knows how to be playful, knows how to just have fun, knows how to not be so damn serious, all right? And again, especially when we're talking about masculine men who, as I mentioned earlier, are already dealing with a world that's very serious, already dealing with all kinds of things, to be able to come home to someone or, or come to someone who is peaceful, joyful, playful, fun, that's such a refreshing thing, all right? And so men love when they find that in a woman. Men love when there's a woman they can crack jokes with and she can laugh rather than be offended. Ain't nothing worse than being with a woman who's always so damn serious it's always taking something the wrong damn way, all right? You, and you're generally just making a joke. You're not even trying to insult. But she has to turn it into something negative. That is, That just drains a man. And he's not going to want to commit to that, hold on to that. Or, or Again, he's not going to be drawn to that. So you want to make sure that you are not holding on to the energy of finding a reason to be offended. You know, and, and in a world today that people are quick to be offended, think about it. Like, it's, it's just so draining at times. So definitely tapping into more of a lightheartedness, having a sense of humor, being able to just enjoy life and have fun and, and helping him relax. Because a lot of times, the masculine man may struggle with knowing how to just relax. So having that woman that brings that balance to him becomes very valuable and highly desired. 
All right, so now we are at number seven. And the seventh feminine quality men love in a woman is being willing to listen and learn. <laughs> I had to throw in the learn part, all right? Because I'm sure you've heard the listen part, but let's break it down real quick. So again, now first let me make something very clear. When I say listen, I don't mean it's just simply do as he says, right? Is there a level of being cooperative, being, you know, being able to just embrace, all right, this is what he wants to do. Let me go along with that. Being able to flow with this man. Yes, there is a level of that. Do I want you to let a man drive you off a cliff? Hell no. You know what I'm saying? But I, but of course, if we're talking about a genuine guy here, uh, uh, a man who's truly in his masculine health, and I, I don't feel the need to say healthy masculine because true masculine to me is healthy, um, especially when he's serious about a woman then in that case, yeah, there is that degree of being able to, to listen and, and allow him to lead in that way, right? But also listening to him in the sense of, and even more importantly, allowing him to feel like he can talk to you, that he can express himself to you, that you won't throw things back in his face, that you won't make him feel like less of a man if he has a moment of weakness, uh, that, that you will actually... Try to understand where he's coming from rather than listen and rebuttal it or listen and, and, over, and overpower it with your own perceptions and feelings and emotions. Sometimes as a woman, some women allow their emotions in the moment to get the best of them to where they don't realize you're, you're completely ignoring what the man just said to you. Or you're not processing his actual words, you're busy interpreting and analyzing. You're, well, he, he said he wants to go out and have some 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 chicken. I don't know why I'm talking about chicken right now, but he wants to go out and get him some chicken. And you're like, what he really wants to do is go meet that chick he saw the other day. Like, you, and I'm just coming up with some extreme example. But what I'm saying is, sometimes y'all are so in your head that you're not listening to him. You're not taking him for his words. You're just interpreting and analyzing, and that becomes very frustrating. You got to learn how to just listen, how to just give him the benefit of the doubt. If he's showing you that he can't be trusted, then my, then my thing is, why, why are you even with him? Why are you even entertaining him? You know what I'm saying? So if that's the argument you're going to make, then let the man go. But outside of that, learn to listen. But I said, listen and learn. So it's, again, it's hearing what he has to say and learning from the learnable moments. Learning him, learning his desires, learning how he works, learning how he likes to be received, learning how, what his love languages are, all right? And of course, this is a two-way street. Of course, we want the man to learn you as well. We want the man to listen to you as well. It goes without saying right now. But the focus is on, on you and, and the feminine qualities that is going to draw that man in or men love to see in a woman, and that willingness to listen and understand and learn is a beautiful thing and, again, allows you to be in your feminine in that moment. So you have to be, be willing to embrace that. And if you do, you're going to see a great benefit from it. And now number eight is being selective. Now, this one, I, I, I kind of was on the fence about throwing it in there. But let me, give, let me just explain my logic. And, and I'm, it may be right or wrong. It's just my perception and and. Here's why I mentioned being selective. I do believe that being selective speaks more to femininity. And I say that because, and I feel a little funny saying this, but I, I'm, I'm just going to tell you what I was thinking earlier. I say it because I thought about it in the sense of just even being sexual, right? Whereas men tend to be a little less selective <laughs> with who they may lay down with. They might tend to be a little bit more all over the place. One could argue that this, this desire to be running the streets speaks to a masculine energy, an alpha energy, whatever. That argument can be made, right? Whereas women typically tend to be more reserved. Now, some people can argue that's due to societal conditioning. We're not going to get into all that right now. But the reason why I mentioned select is because, yes, you tend to see that the woman, the feminine, tends to be more mindful of 
who she's going to be dealing with. She's not as quick to be one to run the streets as a man. And so I do think that whether it is viewed as feminine or not, I, I'm just giving you the explanation as to why I included it as a feminine trait. But whether you view it as feminine or not, I still do think we can accurately say that men do love to see a woman who is selective, a woman who is not for everyone, a woman who is not easily gotten. And again, when I, or not again, but let me stress, when I say not easily gotten, I do not mean, and I am not encouraging, playing hard to get. It just means you have standards. And that you don't, you don't, you're not for everybody. You don't get with this any old man who comes your way making half an effort. That for the men who come correct, for the men that you, who are of quality, because one of the, I think some women don't understand that when men see women deal with other men that that man may view as low quality, that can reflect poorly on the woman. All right. And that can make the woman less desirable. Like, oh, that's the type of dude she deals with? Now it's like he may, some men may be less likely to view her now as someone he wants to take serious because of the history of the type of guy she dealt with. So by being more selective, by, by see, seeming to be a woman who only deals with a, a certain good quality of man or a man who brings more to the table, that can make a woman more desirable to a lot of men and more specifically to a more masculine man. All right. So again, it, we can argue whether it's truly a feminine trait or not when it comes to being selective, but I do think it is something that men like to see in a woman. And now, uh, number nine and the, and the last feminine trait men love to see in women is being willing to embrace his lead. So this kind of goes hand in hand with being willing to listen, but I want to go a little further than that. Again, the masculine man is a man who has learned how to lead. And when I say lead, please understand, I'm not talking about lead as a dictator. I'm talking about lead with love. I'm talking leading with having your best interests at heart. I'm talking about leading, making sure I am protecting you, all right, and trying to give you the best as well as give me what I need as well. You know, making sure we're both happy here. All right, that kind of quality leadership that leads to successful, great, positive, fruitful things. All right, the man who is masculine needs a woman who can embrace his lead, who can trust his leadership. And again, if you struggle to trust a man's leadership, you have to be able to be honest about is it coming from a lack of healing from what you've been through or seen other women been through. Or is it because this man is, man is lacking certain qualities that allow you to embrace that in him? And if he lacks those qualities, again, the question becomes either why are you with him or at the very least address it with him to see if he can correct it so that now we can get things in order. Because if you cannot embrace his lead, what's going to happen is that you will end up being the leader. And if you end up being the leader, you have now walked out of your feminine and you've become the masculine. And now you will condition this man if he isn't truly in his masculine. And, and, and I would argue if he's allowing you to now just lead the way, he's probably not truly have, uh, walked in his masculine. It now becomes a dynamic where the burden is on you. You'll start to resent this man. You'll start to lose respect for this man. It will go downhill at some point. So even though, yes, it doesn't mean that there isn't going to be a moment where the woman may not find herself leading in a situation or the man is leaning on her expertise or whatever. But if it becomes that she is the constant leader, that's going to be a situation that doesn't end well for most people. And it damn sure isn't going to be a situation that allows you to stay and walk in your feminine and exude the energy that that man is going to truly be drawn to, that's going to truly give you the peace, harmony, and happiness that you desire and create the amazing, successful relationship that you deserve. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here, and I'll see you there. They say when a man wants a woman, there is nothing that will stop him from pursuing her. And I don't know about all that, all right? Because there's always some exceptions to the rule. But on the flip side, 
Let's talk about the idea of a 